In just one moment, one decision altered the course of Scar's life, and though he did not know it then, he signed his own death certificate. Scar had everything an unyielding ambition, an infallible plan, and a legitimate claim to the throne. All he needed was some brainless muscle to see it through. Muscle that wouldn't get in the way and risk everything that he worked for. Unfortunately for him, his choice would do exactly that. Over the course of just four years, Scar's mistake would turn what was once a bustling kingdom in the savannah into a starving shadow of its former glory, stranded in a desert of his own making. In this video, find out what Scar did that doomed his plan from the very beginning, and how, with just some minor changes, he could have ruled Pride Rock forever. At the end of The Lion King, we watch as Scar's plan falls apart piece by piece, culminating in his death at the hands of his only allies. It's the natural conclusion to Simba's arc and a gratifying end to Scar's. But what if it didn't end that way? As satisfying as it is to watch the big guy get his comeuppance, it's just as fun to consider what would have happened if he didn't fail. So the question is, was it possible for Scar to succeed? To start, we'll have to dive a little further into Scar himself. What do we really know about Scar? Well, to start off, his name isn't really Scar. It's Taka. Unless you're not a fan of considering the Lion King books as canon, in which case his name is just Scar. Regardless of what his name is, a few things remain certain. Scar is arrogant. He believes himself above everything and everyone else, including his own brother, King of Pride Rock, Mufasa. In fact, his brother seems to be at the center of Scar's whole character. Scar covets what Mufasa has, his power, his reputation, his title. While Scar is brushed off or talked down to a number of times, no one ever dares address Mufasa in such a way. Even hyenas shudder at the mere utterance of his name. Shut up. Mufasa. Ooh. Do it again. Mufasa. <laughs> Scar inspires no such reaction. Despite Mufasa's superior reputation, Scar's arrogance makes him believe that he is above Mufasa. He's willing to admit that Mufasa is stronger, but brushes it off as brute strength in contrast to his own superior intellect. Delving into the Lion King books gives us more information. A Tale of Two Brothers, a story centering around the two brothers, shocking I know, conveys that Scar's resentment for Mufasa has existed since before their adolescence. Many fan works and theories speculate that Mufasa's place as the heir was the source of it, exacerbated by their father's assertion that Mufasa understood what it took to be king, while Scar didn't understand that ruling a kingdom was a great responsibility not just a power trip. Even if we disregard any of the, let's call it, extended canon, it's evident in the Lion King film itself that Scar believes that the kingship is his right and that he is willing to do anything to get it. He didn't care about the inhabitants of the Pride Lands or his would-be subjects. Scar just cared about being king. Unfortunately for him, that would be his undoing. With his ultimate goal set in stone, Scar needed a way to achieve it. That's where the hyenas come in. But how does a lion find himself allied with a giant pack of hyenas? To answer that question, we once again look to the extended canon. Though it's never explicitly confirmed in the film, we can infer that Scar and the hyenas have been acquainted for a while. The books imply that he's known them since he was young. Young Scar, then Taka, says that the hyenas begged him to join their group. From the get-go, their interactions are shady, with Shenzai, Banzai, and Ed, also the main three hyenas featured in the film, suggesting to a young Scar that making Mufasa look foolish to their father would make him realize that Scar should be the next king. Naturally, there are a lot of fan theories surrounding the forming of the Scar-Hyena alliance, but a popular theory is that the hyenas are responsible for Scar's resentment of his brother. This theory proposes that the hyenas targeted Scar to sow discord in the royal family which would ultimately lead to an ally of the hyenas being in power. The line, It's great that we'll soon be connected to a king who will be all time adored, in the song Be Prepared, shows that the hyenas are aware of what they have to gain from this. <laughs> we'll be prepared. <laughs> For what? This would mean that the hyenas intentionally sowed seeds of doubt and insecurity in Scar about his brother and his own place in the royal family, which honestly is majorly messed up. 
Like, we get that there's actual murder in the movie, but preying on what would be an innocent kid and tearing his family apart for personal gain is also quite messed up. Theories aside, the alliance itself is a mutually beneficial one. The hyenas get food and to live in the Pride Lands instead of their creepy, desolate little corner of the world, and Scar gets to be king, which is all he really cares about. This again is supported by the line in Be Prepared where Scar sings, Stick with me and you'll never go hungry again. Stick with me and you'll never go hungry again! Then, of course, quid pro quo, you're expected to take certain duties on board. With all of that in mind, let's get back to the point of this video. What did befriending the hyenas cost Scar? The answer to that can be given in three main points. Looking at it from a strictly political perspective, allying himself with the hyenas was a dumb move. Sure, they were the henchiest of henchmen, but when it came down to it, they were essentially a foreign military. For the Kingdom of Pride Rock, the lions served as both subjects and protectors. So in a sense, they were the military. Keeping in mind that Scar was a member of the royal family and second in line for the throne, by allying himself with the hyenas, Scar basically committed treason and made himself the leader of a foreign army. Imagine if Prince Harry returned to Britain with the American armed forces to strong arm his way ahead of Prince William in the line of succession. It wouldn't be the best look to the British public, would it? Similarly, such a move could not have impressed the lionesses no matter how legitimate Scar's claim to the title seemed to be. As seen in the film, this dissatisfaction resulted in Nala seeking out Simba and Scar's ultimate demise. Secondly, befriending the hyenas had a direct hand in the desolate state of the Pride Lands following the time skip. Overhunting as a result of their inhabitants turned what was once a prospering savanna into a barren desert. Note to Scar, starving and overworking your citizens is also not a great way to inspire loyalty. Lastly, we've established that Scar is willing to do whatever it takes to ensure that he survives and thrives, whatever it takes, including but not limited to manipulating children, betraying a nation, regicide, and plain old backstabbing. So of course, when he's backed into a corner, Scar throws the hyenas under the bus. It's just his luck that they overheard him and decided to eat him as revenge. But details, details. Considering all of that, had Scar not befriended the hyenas, could he have succeeded? In a perfect hyena-less world, Scar utilizes his quote-unquote superior intellect to rule alongside Mufasa. After all, even without the title of king, Scar is still royalty. He still has power. He just needs a place to utilize it. Seeing as Mufasa seemed genuinely disappointed in Scar's lack of participation in the royal family, per his reaction to Scar missing Simba's birthday ceremony, it can be reasonably assumed that he wouldn't be opposed to Scar taking on a more active role, even being his second-in-command. Of course, Scar could never be happy with second place, which is why we propose a second option, one where Scar still gets to kill Mufasa, but instead of brute-forcing his way to the throne through a military coup, he puts in some actual effort to be a decent king, which really just means not overhunting the savanna and causing the near extinction of his own species. The lionesses were willing enough to accept him as king in the original story, so all he really has to do is find a way to cause the stampede without the hyenas, and he's home free. Without the involvement of the hyenas, even the tiniest effort to be an okayish king would get Scar by. And without the terrible conditions of the savanna, Nala would never leave and bring Simba back. Simba would remain content to live his life worry-free. But Scar didn't do that. So when Scar fails, it is not because Simba let him go. In every sense but the physical, Scar's demise was destined from the moment he gave the hyenas a place in his plan. So Scar fails because he let himself go. Okay, what do you guys think? Did Scar actually have a chance to rule, or was he always destined to fall? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one!